about this this morning, but uh, I was coming an after the business. And in 2008, that's when the Bear Sturgeon Traction was. And I was getting ready to do the business plan to get out of school. And it was a horrible time. Nobody's hired. And happened to find Halliburton and Trout Sturgeon. At that point, my background was in Trout So, Took the job like a There weren't many choices, right? And it was a great company, big company, lots of opportunity. Who cares what to start? And I started as an application evaluation specialist. I did receive a drill bit or a drill in there to support my life. So I went out and went to work, uh, started in the field, selling drill bits for about six months, and then uh, went to be part of a more technical role. Um, Moved up to Pinedale, where Charlie was at the time, as an application financial specialist. And then about a year later, I moved to Denver as an account manager. Uh, did that for about three years, covered stuff all across the Rockies, uh, all on customers in Oklahoma City, Midland, Houston, wherever. Uh, a lot in Denver, of course. And then uh, about three years ago, I moved to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, became an area manager. Um, I had to learn a lot about the air drilling and the Northeast and that ocean kind of little basin, you to come on itself. Um, but I know that times are tough in this business and uh, I kind of set aside for you guys and some of the shit out in the market that isn't quite what you expect to be when you start in the program. So anyway, I'll let Charlie introduce himself as well. I've been in the long 
tip of that nose, right there, that's the high, that's the, that's the lowest point or the highest point of the bit, right? So it's the first to engage the new bronch. So this is definitely where you tend to notice damage, it's one of the most damage prone areas. Um, more work the nose cutters do, the more aggressive the bit needs to be. So if you're engaging new rock and you put three cutters on that rock and try to start to fail that rock versus putting 13 cutters on it, it's more aggressive, right? You need to think more like, like a saw blade, right? If you're cutting wood with a saw blade and you look at one that's for cutting soft wood and you just have a few large teeth on it versus something for cutting metal where you have tons of little teeth, right? Same kind of idea. So we have just a few large gutters on there to engage that rock first. Yeah, it's gonna be more aggressive. It's probably gonna fail a little faster, but you also open yourself up to more damage at the same time. There are only two things that can damage time, heat and impact. You get heat when you throw sand. Shale shears and the sand is not sand point holes. Yeah. 
figure out what's actually going on. You just look at a bit and say, yep, it's broke. That's not really what we're looking for. You have to figure out why. Yeah. And once you got a next 10 miles long I like strip, you can't see it down there, right? So you have to understand that from the data that you're given, right? Nobody can tell exactly what's going on down home. You have to look at your goals and you have to look at the parameters and things that are used and all the information that you can gather. Because nobody can tell exactly what that baby is. So there's you know modern amounts of testing at times, but the more that you can have, the more information you can put together and look at things, the more accurate pictures you can develop in order to move your Brought forward and your well is forward and drill faster. Just real quick, these are uh, basically oil samples from the form formations that we produce in North Dakota, uh, uh, South Dakota. There's Bach and Three Forks, Tyler, and Red River. So I'm passing them on. I think I just got the wrong one. Exactly. And they are flat, so I'm trying not to be able to throw them against the wall right now. But uh, you can see some of them are sludge. Tell me what's the difference between these profiles. <coughs> Anything different? Uh, no higher than for cone, right? Okay. Which A, B, or C would be more steerable? C. More stable? Five eight centers. 
So if you're if you're pretty confident in your ability to drill a curve and you're looking for ROP and performance, maybe you know something. Right? Maybe you go to the five blade. The five blade is the choice of yeah. And in most cases, I mean, it's changed a lot. Uh, 2011, we were running a six blade, half inch cutter, dual row, fairly flat profile, you know, four sear ability. And then we came up with this FXD 55M, which was five blades, five eight, got a fairly deep cone, and nobody thought it would drill curves. I mean, when they first looked at it, they were very standoffish. But within two months, we got a couple different companies to try it, and all of a sudden, we, we couldn't fill them back to them. And that finally took over the market because everybody was stuck on the drill curves. It had to be six or seven blades, smaller cutters, dual rows. They, I mean, they had all these different philosophies. They thought that everybody was kind of stuck in this paradigm. That's what, that's what a curve fix should look like. But when it all switched to five blade, it's, it's changed the whole market and it's, it's gone from, I think the five blade originally started in the curve as a Barnett when that was big, and then moved up into North Dakota and it spread over even, that's what we run in, in the Northeast as well, five blade curve fix. So it was a big paradigm and everybody thought they knew what they needed. But we started shaving curves down from 30, 40, 50 hours. I think the first one we did was like 18 hours. So save a day or two of rig time. And we're not all curves in 8 to 12 hours. Yeah, yeah. So how much data do you have to accumulate before you design like any bit and you put it out there for Well it depends, but as much as you possibly the more data that, and there's always a dynamic, right? Certain operators are more forthcoming with information than, than other operators. <coughs> and what we found, at least in, in our view, is that the more open they are, the more they're willing to share their information, <coughs> and the better we can understand our own fit's performance, the faster we can come up with new iterations. A but, classic example of that's my know in ever have operators not share information because they consider it proprietary information? Yes, all the time. And we sign some you know, NDAs. But you can cite all the bit records so that the information doesn't go anywhere with the data. Yeah. Right. And they can give it just internally to that and you know gosh, I think the most extreme example we had to sign a million dollar liability thing with Chesapeake to keep their data in in the Utica cycle. Okay. And then Aubrey Hill was a bunch of them that started 18. But it, it happens all the time. And, and we're used to it, and we, we try to work with the operators to open up that information and, and, and open up that dialogue. Okay, let's start talking about what really happened. We, we tested a, another one, we tested a five blade, and they said, hey, this run was terrible. You know, and they put up a graph that had information from all the rigs that that this particular operator had in find it. And they said, your run's terrible, it's over here, it's way in the back half. And I said, huh. So I went back and broke down the data, because that rig had only been stood up for maybe three or four months, six months at the moment. So I went back and I actually had, those were Jim Eisenhower Horn reports, which was pretty awesome, really. So I went back and dug through the data. Well, we got 
on the grand scheme of things, it didn't look that great. But when you looked at that particular rig, this design really does something. It's the fastest run and the longest run they had. So a lot of times it's breaking down that information and having all the data in front of you to try to make decisions. Is this good or is this bad? And then a lot of it is looking at your goals, right? Combining Payson or Taco data and goal photos and collecting all that information, sitting on runs at the rig, collecting data that way as well. So I, that's key. I mean, that's, that's the lifeblood of what we do. And the less information we get, the slower the process is, and the least, the less accurate the process is. I can understand your point up there, you know, saying that it can be proprietary, but when you've got 10 milligrams of ground, one gram of steel, and tight volume, and they're all going to the same depth, it's a hole in the ground. There's not that much proprietary about it. Yeah. Other than if they want to keep their bottom holes and what they're actually doing and stuff, because they think they're doing it better than somebody, that, I mean, that's, yeah, that's legitimate, and I understand that. But overall, Well, if you're drilling the fastest, it's a competitive advantage because it's cheaper to drill and your wells are more productive. So if you're drilling the fastest, you want to keep it to yourself because your wells are more valuable. You're protecting shareholder value. If you're giving away your information, then you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. And how do you, if you want to stay faster, how do you do that? Have the best team. But if your neighbor starts kicking the car out of you, you know, Being in the north compared to the rocks, it's much more tight hole. It's much harder to get information. <coughs> serious about that stuff moves. And they don't like to share a lot of data. And in a lot of ways it has slowed down the, the business development process in that area. In general. I would say that we've made less progress due to things like that mm. than we could in other ways. So, so you guys actually make our jobs easier in the long run. Because half the time, company men that title you, it's not because it's a tight hole, it's because they don't know how to work their computer. Yeah. 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 Or they're just too lazy to go in there and press print and take it out of our So, but it's, it's, it's probably like this in most things. The more data you have, the better you can understand what direction you're going, the better off you are. And, and in this business, it moves so fast. Such volume of information that it's very, very hard to keep up with all the information. And so you start trying to simplify things and summarize things. Sometimes it's accurate. But, um, so, yeah, lower, lower blade count is generally more aggressive. Higher unit level per time. In the, north, in the northeast, we're drilling the uh, deep Utica well. So typically, the, the Utica is in Ohio, right? Seven, eight thousand feet deep. But in Pennsylvania, it's 12, 13,000 feet. They've got some really hard things. In it. And one of the things that we've been going back and forth about is blade count protection things. They're taking 25 days to drill 3,000 feet. It's killing their economics. So, We've been debating about this. The higher unit loads are cut with this particular operator for some time. Trying to tell them that more length is not necessarily helping them, that they need more of that that off. But we're going both ways and testing different things, and then pretty open to giving us more information so that we can advancing our design. We should always play out there are more numbers of the product. Lower blade pounds are typically easier to clean. You get a bigger jump slot, right? Same thing. You've got limited space. So when you're trying to pack seven blades into a six-inch fit, you have all these tolerances you've got to meet. So the cleaning on a seven-blade six-inch fit is not going to be as easy to achieve to get the proper level as we're moving on a high blade. Also, when you design, what you're trying to do. Very small hole. So in the center of the bit, you have a very small 
basically target, you have to bring all those nozzles in to be able to the fluid come out. And it, it can really limit you on, on what you're able to do a lot of times. Yeah. You've got to get every nozzle and run this, right? Which looks really easy right there, but I'm telling you, it's a ditch. <laughs> yeah. You're trying to get seven of them into this little tiny bit. And it's, it's still got to be durable, right? It's still got to be able to drill rock in here in the toughest environment. No man, right? So, how do you keep that thing from falling apart? Crisscross and everything. So, fit stability, lower lower blade count is generally considered less stable. Uh, is, is generally true. Um, and then higher blade count, more stable, less aggressive. You know, depending on what you want to do. What you want to do. One thing that they had on the last of that was uh, the over engagement. That's not stick slip. Uh, basically, your bit will bite in. We actually uh, ran uh, subs, uh, inter info subs, and in find out what some of the code to do. Basically, we're trying to find out what happens with a bit that over engages. So, a bit over engages basically is six in the rock, right? And then it generates torque through the motor and turns. Pipe and everything until it breaks free. Once it breaks free, and what a lot of people I don't think understand is because of the way bits are designed with back and things like that, one of the first things it does when it breaks free is it pops up or pops away from the formation. Then it frees me. All that torque that's in that pipe that's you know it's all stored, and when it tops off, it frees me. So we've had subs that told us that it that the bits actually turned up to a thousand RPM before it slammed back on bottom. Now that can tear some things up. Uh, when you were running the sub, were the contractors running something like soft torque or something similar on their top drives at the same time, or were they completely unregulated? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Uh, so when you ran your sub to see the stick slip, yeah. were the contractors running uh, something similar on the top drive side, like soft torque or? Can rakes, uh, soft drill, or any of that kind of stuff? Do you know? I have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> One of the most common. I'm assuming so. Was also did it. What kind of a rig was it? Do you know? It was top drive. It was just a. They were. This was. Flexible. Yeah, flexible. An H and P then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.